wanted to make sure it popped yeah. up on there. <laughs> I'll ask Roger to do it. Sorry. You guys got all quiet all of a sudden. You knew, you knew it was the anticipation. It was killing you, huh? Good morning. I guess I can take this off. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord, join in a song with sweet accord. And thus surround the throne, and thus surround the throne. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Let those refuse to sing who never knew our God. But children of the heavenly King, but children of the heavenly King, may speak their joys abroad, may speak their joys abroad. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Then let our songs abound and every tear be drawn. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. We're marching to Emmanuel's ground. To fairer worlds on high. To fairer worlds on high. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Good morning. Happy New Year. We made it. 2021. Amen to that. We're all glad you're here. I know we're kind of thin on numbers. It snows, we're kind of cold, but we're glad everyone here is here. And it's always good to see you. Um, if you've got a telephone like me, you need to silence it. We're going to get started here in just a minute, and I just asked Katie, Jim is just home because he doesn't feel well, but uh, I asked her where he doesn't feel well, and she says, well, basically all over he doesn't feel well. So we'll uh, keep him in our prayers. All right, we're going to start singing and enjoy this time, so let's get together. We'll continue uh, singing. Some of the songs are, are uh, very simple, and so we don't have the, the music up here, um, so you'll need to just refer to the sheet for those. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. 
The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. I love you with the love of the Lord. I love you with the love of the Lord. I see in you the glory of my King, and I love you with the love of the Lord. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. There is only one God, there is only one King, there is only one body, that is why we can sing. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. A common love for each other, a common gift to the Savior, a common bond holding us to the Lord, a common strength when we're weary, a common hope for tomorrow, a common joy in the truth of God's word, a common love. Before we're led in prayer, we're going to sing As the Deer. As the deer pants for the water, my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. I want you more than gold or silver, only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. You
Let's pray together. Father, we come before you this morning, a group of your children, uh, to worship you and to sing to you, Father, and just in, in whatever way we can to just tell you that we love you. We thank you, Father, for uh, the fact that you love us and that you gave your son Jesus that we might be able to live with you forever. Thank you for his sacrifice, Father. Thank you for his life, for his teachings, for his resurrection, and for the fact, Father, that he reigns even now as King of kings and Lord of lords, and that he has all authority in heaven and on earth. We're grateful, Father, that we serve a risen Savior and a, and a good and kind and loving King. We thank you, Father, for your spirit that you have put in us. And for all that your spirit does, the fact that your spirit even intercedes for us, Father, when we're not quite sure how to pray. We're grateful, Father, for the blessings that you have given to each of us. You've provided everything that we need. Uh, you've given us food and clothes and, and jobs and abilities and homes. And you've given us, Father, your word and, and this church, Father, that is, that is such a family and community. And we thank you, Father, for that. We've really needed it this past year, Father, and we're grateful that you continue to watch out for us and provide for us. We're grateful, Father, for the hope that we have that Jesus will come again one day and he will bring with him new creation and we will be able to live with you forever. We look forward to that day, Father, and we're encouraged by that promise. Father, we're grateful that those of us who are able to be here this morning have um, sufficient health and we're feeling well enough to be here, Father, but we know there are those of our number and others, Father, who aren't feeling well this morning or, or who are just, uh, who are a little too fearful to be out and about this morning. And we just pray, Father, for those that you would, uh, would heal those who need healing, that you would comfort and strengthen those, Father, who are feeling down, uh, that you would just um, bless them and, and, and help us, Father, to be a blessing to them. Uh, we thank you, Father, that uh, we live in a time where uh, something like a vaccine is possible. And we live in a time, Father, where, um, where we just realize your blessings on so many different levels. And so as we continue our worship this morning, as we continue to sing to you, and as we remember Jesus and, and, and hear your word proclaimed, we just pray, Father, that you would help us to, to be a joyful people, knowing that we have a God who, who is powerful and who loves us uh, and who works things together for our good. We give you praise, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Over the last, oh, several, a month or so, um, you know, leading up to Christmas, we sang joy to the world several times and uh last week i was telling you about um how that was that was written several hundred years ago and that it that it really um wasn't so much written about baby jesus it was more written from the words of a psalm talking about the the risen reigning king jesus and um, so when it says, joy to the world, the Lord has come, that's, that's what it's talking about. Um, well, uh, that was written by Isaac Watts, and he's written several other hymns that are familiar to us. And we're going to sing, When I Survey the Wonders Cross, before we have communion together, another one of those, those old songs. Um, and we are in solidarity with people throughout history 
who have looked at the cross and found it to be amazing, found it to be um, wondrous, the wondrous cross. Um, I did find that there is a missing verse that's not in our book. So the fourth verse down there is not going to be on the slides. There's going to be a blank slide, and we're going to sing this verse that's I've never heard before. Um, that's part of the original song. So when I survey the wonders cross, if I can find my... When I survey the wondrous cross On which the Prince of Glory died My richest gain I count but loss And poor contempt on all my pride forbid it lord that i should boast save in the death of christ my god all the vain things that charm I sacrifice them to his blood. See from his head, his hands, his feet. Sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did e e such love and sorrow meet or thorns compose so rich a crown his dying crimson like a robe spreads o'er his body So this past week, we celebrated New Year's Eve, the end of 2020 and the beginning of a new year. And today is a new day of a new week of a new year. And just as Christ died and laid in the grave and was raised from the dead to new life, so we as Christians have a newness of life through Christ. Romans 6, 4, uh, Paul says in Romans 6, 4, that we are buried, therefore, with him in baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. So as we come together today to honor and remember Christ and the new life that we have through him, 
uh, let us partic participate of the bread and let us remember Christ's body that was willingly given as a sacrifice for our sins. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're just grateful for this day, this time that we could come together as a body of believers. Uh, Father, we pray that you'll be with us at this time, that we might remember Christ and the love that was shown to us through his life, his death, and his resurrection. Let us on this day and at this time remember your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the body that was freely given as a sacrifice for our sins. Not only today, but each day and every day of this week, this year, and for the remainder of, of our lives, let us remember your Son and the new life that we have through his sacrifice. And it's through his blessed name that I pray. Amen. Let us pray as we partake, before we partake of the fruit of the vine. Heavenly Father, again we come before you this morning in remembrance of Jesus, your Son, who came down to this earth for the purpose of being the sacrifice for us, who gave up his life and died on the cross for us and came to this earth for the purpose of being the sacrifice whose blood was shed for our sins and that makes us holy and pure and without blemish before your eyes. We're astounded and humbled at this ultimate act, ultimate act of love and, and we are eternally grateful for his sacrifice and for the fact that through his death that we have new life, life eternal. And through his blessed name I pray, amen. So with a new year comes new resolutions, and I hope all of you have resolved to come to know God in a more deeper, in a deeper and more meaningful way in the coming year, and that you've resolved to serve him more in, in this year of 2021. In Romans 12, 1, it says that I appeal, appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. So as Christians, we're called to sacrifice our time, our efforts, and our monies as part of our spiritual worship to God. So let us pray for the monies that have been, are being collected here and the works that are being done here at Green Valley. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that we give of ourselves freely and joyfully in light of the way that you have given so freely to us. We pray that we will present our bodies as a living sacrifice to you and serve you more in the coming year. Father, we pray that our, our funds that are collected to do good works and to expand your kingdom here in this community and throughout the world and we pray that these funds collected will be used to your glory. We're thankful again for the love you've shown to us through your son. And so his blessed name I pray. Amen. If you have your Bible with you, 
Uh, turn to Psalm 46, or if you've got a device you want to look at that on, Psalm 46. Uh, Mary's going to take the kids out if, you, if any, looks like there's two, maybe. So our sermon today is going to be a little different, <clears throat> not so much of a sermon, but there will be some thoughts that kind of jive <clears throat> with the sentiment of this psalm. Um, this particular psalm has a heading that says that it is, <clears throat> says, to the choir master, of the sons of Korah, says, according to Alamoth, a song. So this was Alamoth, I'm assuming, is the tune that this would have been sung to that none of us know. <clears throat> the Sons of Korah is a whole nother really interesting uh, story and connection that deserves your attention at some point. We don't have time to go in that, into that today, but um, there's some history behind these psalms that have such a title, and it's amazing, really, that, um, that these sons of Korah were even around producing these psalms um, that became part of Scripture. So you look into that, it's, very, it's an interesting story. But particularly the beginning of this psalm, um, talks about us not living in fear, not living in fear. That's not who God's people are. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Okay, we're going to sing uh, Jim's favorite, the first and last verses of Amazing Grace, and then have our quote-unquote sermon today. Why don't we stand up and stretch our legs as we sing this? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. When we been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, with no less day to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Okay, be seated.
So Roger Murray and I are going to speak, uh, and uh, I get to talk about the blessings that we've had this year. You know, with the whole pandemic and, and the virus and being quarantined, you know, we could really just get really down over 2020. But let me just say that God has really blessed us because there were so many other churches who took months to get back together. And then they got back together, and then they would um, do virtual church for a few months. And then they would come back together, and they would do virtual church for a few months. But since May, you know, we have been able to meet together. And that's a blessing, to be able to come here every Sunday and to see each other and to be encouraged. And not only that, but uh, it speaks to this church when I say that we were able to build our sound system and to buy a new computer. When we needed the money, Green Valley, you, came forward and helped with that. And we got the new computer and we were able to get the new software and do live streaming. And let me tell you, um, went around and, and been talking to uh, some of the shut-ins and they tell me, I get to watch you every Sunday. Even though I can't be there, it's a blessing to have that available. And so thank you for contributing to help do that. That's a blessing. And now not only our members, but Roger's got a friend in Sweden, Sweden who watches it every Sunday. And she shares it with her family, you know. And you can share it with your family. I know that my mother-in-law in, -law in uh, Tennessee, because she's 90, uh, she doesn't get out and go to church, but she watches uh, our channel. She watches Houston's channel. And she's getting church twice a day, you know. Uh, and I think there's other people who are doing that because of the live streaming. They're able to watch Green Valley, but they're able to watch the church maybe that they went to several years ago, which is a blessing. Um, also, this chair arrangement. I, I don't mean to be negative, but there's no way we could have done this without a pandemic. <laughs> there would have been too many people, you know, saying, well, that's my assigned seat, you know, and but now, I mean, really, when you can look around and see each other, it, it, it really is a blessing. You're not staring at the back of someone's head. Um, I keep opening this and it keeps closing. Um, but, you know, it's a blessing to be able to see each other. And let me say, um, not only that, but God, God has still worked through us. Okay, even though we've been quarantined and we've been, you know, told to wear masks and everything, um, we were able to have our trunk or treat. And we had over 200 community guests come out. And that's where we met the Griffin family. Um, Maccabee Griffin and his son's been here several times. His wife, I, I think, works. Uh, that's where we met them and they started coming. And we were able to do kids' coats. God used us to help provide coats for families here in Hamilton County in the Noblesville area. And I, I think there were several of you, a lot of you, came out and helped with that. And man, that's a blessing. We were able to, to reach out to people in a, in a safe and in a safe way. Um, we were able to serve family promise. So even though we had this pandemic and we had to uh, social distance and quarantine ourselves sometimes, God still used us to do great things in this community. Um, our young people, you know, we, we did the Valentine dinner. We went to Winterfest right as this pandemic started and no one got sick 
we came back. This was probably the first year that we came back without anyone getting sick. And um, so it was right after that that this started. Uh, we, we've had devotionals up until um, really the 1st of November. We quit because we didn't want our young people being around so many other young people who have been exposed to others before they went to see their families and their grandparents. And so we took precaution. But we're going to start those back up uh, on Monday the 11th. Um, you know, we've had uh, three families start coming this year to Green Valley. Um, Brian and Dietra and his family, you know, that's one of them. Who, and he did a great job of serving or presiding over communion this morning. And that's a blessing. Um, you know, as I, as I talk to people about LTC, because we are going to cancel it this year in 2021, um, Several churches are not meeting together, maybe because they're too small. Um, but a lot of them had told me that their finances have really took a hit this year. Um, and that, you know, the churches were really in a, a bad place. But let me say that Green Valley has stepped up once again, and our contributions have always been good. We haven't had to wonder how we're going to make it through the end of the year because of you and those at home who send their contributions in. And that's a blessing. And I tell you what, just being together and being able to work together as a, as a body, those are blessings. Being able to meet on Sunday morning is a blessing. So let us not look at 2020 as a loss, but knowing that God has worked through each one of us to do great things, all right? Yeah, last year really, um, Mitchell mentioned the, the way everybody stepped up to cover the cost of the sound booth. But financially, in other ways, um, uh, we, we bought a new mower, which seems like such a trivial thing, but... Um, you know, we we hadn't budgeted for that, but uh, just just through people uh, making extra don donations, we were able to get that piece of equipment that makes a, a mundane job um, so much easier. Um, so you guys have been um, generous, and in 2021, um, in the midst of a pandemic we're going to ask you to be more generous. Um, as part of our reg regular budget, <clears throat> we want to be more committed to the ministries that we um, serve, outside ministries that we serve. A couple of them we're going to double um, our commitment to, which really in the, in the vast scheme of things isn't a lot, which is one of the reasons why I think we can double it. But we support a ministry in Arkansas called John 317 that, that we haven't talked nearly enough about, but um, hope you, hopefully you kind of have an idea of what that is. But it's, it's a, um, primarily based on women who who've, um, have addiction um, issues. Um, Roger and I went down there with Jim Pettit and... Um, it's his, his old stomping grounds, and uh, we were just really impressed with that, that program and it, the, the heart of it and the success of it and thought it was worthy of our, our support. So um, in 2020, we were given a, 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 we gave basically $100 a month. We're going to double that. And the same goes with our support of the Malawi um, school, preaching school. Um, same situation there. We want to. We want to. We want to support these things and think that collectively we can do that. 
One of the missing pieces of our uh, sound system and audiovisual um, upgrade that was missing is a projector. Um, something, you know, the one the one we currently have is about ten years old, and it's it's well, it's getting dim, and uh, so we think we've found one and we've ordered one that um, we got it. You know, the pandemic or, or the the effect on business has caused um, what someone else's problem <laughs> it becomes our blessing. Uh, and uh, so we found uh, business was liquidating because they didn't need a conference space anymore and they had this projector in their conference space. So we think we've found one that's going to be much better and we've already ordered that. But here we go. We want to think big for 2021 and we want to do some big projects here. And we want to raise, fasten your seat belts, $40,000 to do some things that need to be done right here. Um, now that sounds like a lot, but stand by. The biggest item is one that's been kind of on the back burner docket for a long time and uh, Jerry Talbert did some research and some different options and we're going to have to go back and revisit that. But our parking lot needs some attention and um, we want to do that. We want to give it the, the attention that it needs and that will probably be some combination of making some repairs, doing some drainage work and then seal coating the whole thing. You know, it's a big, kind of a big deal and we're kind of estimating that's going to be about $30,000, something like that. So the vast bulk of the $40,000 challenge is for parking lot stuff. You know, that, again, seems so mundane, you know, like a mower, um, but, it's, but it's needed, you know. We, we, have, this, we have this great facility, and, it, and it, it takes money to make it happen and make it be what it should be. Um, so... Parking lot, we have um, bat baptistry areas back here that, you know, maybe you've never even been back there, but some fixing up started happening and it's kind of partially done. We want to finish that off. Another project we want to do is there's room up here um, in the back of the auditorium and, you know, there was a thought at one time that we would put the audiovisual booth up there and we decided against that just because of the way that we operate and um, but we want to we want to make use of that space and so we kind of have in mind you know none of this is set in stone but we kind of have in mind um, rearranging it and making a kind of a conference room up there that could be used for um, various different things meetings of different kinds even classrooms but maybe even a, a place to uh, a little prayer chapel kind of a thing that if, you know, you could go have prayer with someone there. There's other equipment up there. There's like a, a computer server room. You know, there's a lot of things that, that we need to um, accommodate for, some storage, you know. But we, we just want to redo that, and that's going to take some money. Um, the pavilion out back there, we would like to... Uh, do some things to it. it re we roof the whole, we're able to, man, get a blessing on an insurance claim and get this place roofed, you know, the, the building. But the pavilion needs a new roof too, and, and the underneath side of it had, had like, um, oh, what do you call it, like chicken wire to keep the birds out, and all that's come down. It just, it needs some attention, so we want to put some um, attention there. And so this is our guess, you know, our best guesstimate is $40,000. Now, we were blessed with um, a donation recently from somebody who doesn't even come to church here, connected to someone who comes to church here, but we got a check for $5,000. You know, that's kind of a nice, um, you know, envelope to open. <laughs> um, and that's going to be, so the seed of this 40000 has already begun. And I'm going to 
put at least a thousand in there. And Roger, I know he's going to put at least a thousand in there. So um, we're 20% of the way there already, you know. So when you got the thermometer, you know, the fundraising goal, um, just think it's already 20% full. And um, here's, um, we were going to prioritize that parking lot. So our goal is, you know, as soon as we, of course, we're going to have to kind of rework the, what the project is and when we get all the numbers, but as soon as we have enough money to do it, we want to do that come springtime, you know, assuming that everybody, you know, collectively gets on board with this idea and w with your dollars, <laughs> with your contributions. Um, now, all of us uh, potentially are going to get a stimulus check of some sort. Now, I, I don't know where you stand politically and whether you think that's a good idea or a bad idea or, or whatever and what you have in mind to do with a $600 check, a $2,000 check. Um, uh, but we have choices, most of us. Um, I look at that and honestly, politically, I think I don't need it. I wish there was a way to really target that stimulus to people who actually do need it because they are out there. And we know, we hear the stories of people whose businesses are crumbling and who've lost jobs and all that kind of stuff, you know, or got sick, really sick, you know. So, um, you know, I look at the potential of me personally and our family of getting a, a check that we don't really need. And, and I have in mind to funnel a good portion of that, if not all of it, right back into this idea because I want to participate in what's going on right here and make this place better. And so part of the challenge is be thinking about that. You know, I don't know what your situation is personally, and maybe you do really need it. Um, regardless, to some level, you ought to, you know, tithe some of that back. So um, there's the potential that we're all going to be getting some kind of a cash infusion that would make sense for some of that to roll back into the work here at Green Valley and could really make this fundraising effort um, somewhat painless, you know? Um, I just can't, I can't believe how blessed, I, I've got two vacations planned <laughs> before the end of February, you know, that's, I, I can't believe how, how much blessing, uh, you know, I have in my own life financially and the, the ability to do things and make choices, um, uh, on something as simple as recreation time, you know? I mean, let's be honest about how blessed we are. It's crazy. The pandemic for me has meant opportunity. I, I got firefighters that get sick, and guess what that means? Overtime. <laughs> Overtime. Those spots got to be filled. And it's, it's amazing how thin we're running at the fire department and how many days there are that, that hey, the opportunity's there, and you could actually go, you know, work and make extra money. You know, one, again, like one person's problem becomes someone else's opportunity. So that's it, man. That's the challenge. $40,000. We could get a lot of things done around this place for $40,000. So let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Well, I don't know about Murray committing me to all that money all of a sudden. I'm not too sure of that, but I'll have to see how that goes. So 2020 was a year. It would be said that it was a bad year, but just think of the good things about it, how many new words and phrases we learned. Social distancing, what a good thing that was, see? How about uh, isolation and pandemic and, uh, you know, they just named all these great words we learned. It was a tremendous time, right? Social, uh, 2020 was a bad year. Uh, thank goodness it's over. 
Now, here's just, a, just a review a little bit. I heard today that the death rate in America, the total deaths, has just topped 350,000 people. Uh, thousands and thousands more have been laid off work and are not working and forced to stay home, isolated, depressed, around the clock, negative media, riots, impeachment, division, polarization. Did anything good happen last year? If you had something good happen, let me know. Let me tell you something while you're thinking about it. I had two new great-grandkids last year. How's that for do? That's pretty cool, huh? You don't have two at a time very often. Probably won't ever happen again, by the way. In fact, I'm pretty sure of that. So uh, what, uh, what happened good for you? Somebody happened, something happened good for anybody out there? Anything? You all here, right? That's good. It, listen, we're not going to formalize this. You can speak. <laughs> I give you permission to speak. Okay? Anybody? Yeah, there's somebody. Ah, another new granddaughter. All right. Any other new kids in there? Let's start with new kids. Any other new babies? All right. That was a shot deal. What else is happening? Any new jobs? Anybody go bankrupt this year? Oh, well, we're okay, I guess. Listen, we had a tough year. But what do we do as a people? What do we do as a congregation of believers? What do we do as the body of Christ? How do we handle fear? You know, I think one thing about it, I think that good things can come out of a, this situation. Right now, there are more people in the world who are struggling with their mortality than have ever struggled with it. All of a sudden, it's serious to them. All of a sudden, maybe Jesus looks pretty good to them. And this is a good time for us to talk to them. Where do we go from here? What are we about? What's our priorities? I think our priorities are the kingdom of heaven. And we miss that sometimes because we think our priorities are a lot of other things, whether it be our vacations or our jobs or whatever it may be. But our priority needs to be the kingdom of heaven. That's what we're here for. We're here to partner with God in developing and exploring this kingdom of heaven for people everywhere. It's a time to remember that we're in a bigger battle, a battle for Jesus. We're in a bigger battle that the world will not understand. We're in a battle that is so much more important than pandemics, than life and death as we know it. It's a battle for eternity. We're in a battle with Jesus, and we're in a battle for him. The world has lost a lot, and it's not much in their lives if they don't have a faith in Christ to look forward to. Just think about what it would be like for you if you didn't have faith in Jesus. What would that be like? What would you think right now? Would you be depressed? I would be, but I'm not. You know, I'm not at all. There's some verses in the Bible that I want to explore just a little bit. We're not going to make this very long. This is going to be real short, but I think uh, some things I want us to see, and I want you to see that we are a people of power. We are not a people of, 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 uh, he, of submission to the world. We're a people of submission to Christ. We're a people of power. We need to instill ourselves with that understanding that power. Just a few verses I want to read to you. Here's one. Ephesians 6, 10 through 17 says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities and the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day comes, the evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, and the breastplate of righteousness in place. And with your feet fitted for readiness, it comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. That doesn't sound like we're retreating to me. That sounds like we're attacking to me. There's a, uh, uh, when Peter, uh, when Jesus asked the disciples, who am I? In Matthew 16, Peter said, you're the Christ, son of God. 
Jesus said, on this rock, Peter, on this church that we're building here, the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Now, I'm telling you right now, that means the gates of Hades are on the defense here. The church is on the offense. We are the offensive weapon of God. We need to see that and understand that. We're strong. We're strong with the people. We look around here and there's a lot of chairs empty. And there's a lot of folks who are still watching. Some people are worried about coming back. I've heard people say, I've heard experts in the religious world say, church will never be the same. I hope not. I hope church is not the same. I hope instead of having a church where we come and get our tickets punched, we come here to revive ourselves, revive each other, to go out to the battlefield and hit in the battlefield. Because we're in a war. And it's got a, and it's a terminal effect here on this war, by the way. We don't have forever. 2 Timothy 2, 7, God said, uh, For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. We have this within us the spirit of power, the spirit of love. Our battle is fought not with swords, not with anger, not with all those things. It's fought with kindness and compassion and love and, and reverence for God and understanding that we've got something special. You have been blessed by becoming a child of God. You've been blessed by being here and being that way. It's time to understand our blessings have a price that Jesus paid for us. Now it's time for us to pay the price. Jesus is walking along and looking at his disciples and they turned to him and he said, if you want to be my disciple, if you want to follow me, you got to pick up your cross daily, deny yourself and follow me. It's not easy necessarily, but it's the only way that makes any sense. It's the right way. You know, I just think about these things, and I, I think we've, we've, I've allowed myself at times this last year to become despondent, to become depressed, to say, oh, boy, you know, this is, a, this is terrible. Life is just terrible. I mean, we got a pandemic. Poor us. Poor us. And then I heard, a, I heard something. I saw, read something on Facebook I thought was so appropriate. It said, something buddy born in 1918 suffered the, the, uh, the Spanish flu, First World War, Second World War, Great Depression, uh, Korea and Vietnam, and probably 9-11. We don't have a whole lot to complain about. It's time for us to look up instead of looking down. You know, one time when I was a kid, I was with my folks. We were in Seattle, Washington. I never will forget. We were at a mall, and of course, I'm from Western Colorado, and a mall was a big deal. I didn't see those very often. I'm walking along. I'm about 13, I guess. I don't remember exactly. And I had my head down because I'm walking along, looking, and and my family's walking along beside me. You'd think they'd say something. Nobody said anything. I'm walking along. There's a post right in front of me. I ran head on into that post. You know, and I can tell you right now. If you lift your head up, you're not going to run into the post. We have a Savior. We have a living God. We are blessed always to do great things. One last verse I want to leave you with. It's in Philippians 4.8. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received from me, Paul writes, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. The way we have peace is to realize we're children of God, and we're so blessed. And there are thousands and millions out there that want what we have. They just don't know what it is. They just don't know what it is. We're here. It's time for us to become spiritually militant. It's time for us to become a people who are on fire for Jesus. Let's make a commitment that next year there's no empty seats. Let's make a commitment that we're going to do something this year unique and challenging. We're going to raise money. We're going to do things here we need to do. But more than that, we're going to talk to our neighbor. We're going to see that person that's hurting and help them. We're going to love everybody we can to the greatest degree we can. I know in my own case, I've let down. 
I know in my own case, I've been really bad at this. But I also know that Jesus still loves me, and he loves you. And we have the opportunity now to do better, to do great things. I challenge us all in this future year to be the people who God relies on, to be the people who can't think about anything else but the kingdom of God. That's our driving force. That's what motivates us. That's what makes it whole. We are good people with a great God. Let us remember that he's a great God. You know what? Some of us in this room might die of COVID. And that's a victory. Death is not the end here. Death is not the end. Death is the beginning. But what's most important is there's people out there that are going to die, and it is the end. Let us all determine ourselves to be recommitted to the gospel of Jesus. If you have needs that we can pray for, we'll pray together. If you'd like to talk with any of us, we'd be glad to talk with you. Won't you come as we stand and sing? Now, before we sing, I want to tell you that I hear from some of these folks that are stuck at home and unable to, to be here. And one of the things that they miss is hearing the singing. So as we sing this song and, you know, lift up is basically like a prayer to God that we're going to follow. Um, let's sing out so that they can enjoy this with us and, and participate with us, okay? I can hear my Savior calling. Be seated. You doing this? Okay. I don't know if we've. 
Get up here in the video, he says. So, um, what's going on? So we'll pray for Stephanie's friend's husband, Michael, who's been down with COVID since November. That's, wow, that's crazy. What else is, uh, what other prayer needs are there, prayer requests? Sorry, I have to get out of the video. My hearing's terrible. Yeah, okay. Okay, Bill and Ellen are back on the road. How's Ellen? She's doing. You know, she's not speaking much. It's a little longer. Okay. So, Bill and Ellen, how's Dwight? But your news was pretty good. And Sharon told me Kara's home. So um, still not great, but um, maybe better than being where she was. Yeah. What about... Uh, Okay. Right. It's uh, this continues to be a you know challenge just because all the operation, the way we do life, is is just different, you know, and uh, and uh, so. Right. Right. 
That's, you know, that's like a, um, in all this, um, there's some Masons in National Guard, right? And, and so they got, National Guard got mobilized to help with the nursing home stuff, and we've got guys at, at work that were called up too to participate in that. And, you know, it's, it's challenging, but then, but then just at the end of, of Gary's comments, he said, you know, Mason will talk to anybody, and he's already, like, befriended some of these residents in this, in the nursing homes, you know, and think about the blessing of that, you know, I mean, what, in, in, in every time there's a challenge, there's a, there's an opportunity and a, a blessing that would have not otherwise even been possible, well, we wouldn't have been forced to do it, you know, all kinds of things are possible, but we don't necessarily jump on and do those things so there are blessings You know, and and it really is true that you know it's always not always it's sometimes hard to see the blessings, but uh, one of the things you can do is always compare, right? Compare your bad situation with there's always somebody whose situation is worse. I was working on uh, New Year's Eve, and so my, you know my 24-hour shift ended 7:30 the New Year's Day. And just after midnight, you know, got called to a house fire, right? So somebody's, somebody's beginning of the new year, like right out of the gate, started with a bunch of their property burning down, you know? And, uh, so, you know, I went home to my house, you know? So um, there's always somebody who's, who we should be looking to with, with empathy and sympathy and and willing to push our blessing out on them, no matter how bad we've got it. So, anybody else? Any, Roger tried to get you guys to talk about some great thing. Come on, anybody? I mean, nothing? Yes, man's search for meaning. Yeah, Victor Frankel. Holocaust survivor. Well, he tried to find his sense of belonging in some way. Yeah. It's important to trust that there's a greater than this God who is right. God of our salvation. Yeah, it's an old it's an old book, been around a long time, but man's search for meaning is uh, good reading and something to get your perspective right when, you know, things seem really challenging. But somebody else was gonna say something good. Lucy? Yeah. Oh, she fell off a horse. That's right. That's, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're okay. Right, see? I mean, it could have been worse. It could definitely have been worse. Okay, um, I'll lead us in a prayer, and then we'll be dismissed. God, uh, thank you for your love. Thank you for um, just being amazing in the way that you bless us richly and, and have called us to partner with you in your work of blessing the creation, and that you've called us to be your very own children through Christ, to be uh, really like a, a new humanity, the kind of humanity you intended from the very beginning, a humanity we couldn't be on our own, but we can be through him. And so we ask that you guide us um, 
with your spirit, that you continue to transform us into that image, into your image, and that we would live out the kind of life that you um, intend for us and that your kingdom would be growing and overtaking the world and pushing back against the very gates of hell. There are um, many um, who have specific prayer requests and we just ask you to be with all of them. If I forget who they are, God, you know who they are. Be with um, Michael, who's uh, Stephanie's friend's husband in the hospital, still dealing with um, COVID and that um, his, his condition would continue to improve and just not just on him, but we ask your blessing on the family and the strain that that has to be. Um, and uh, we, we count our blessings and, and not being in that situation. Um, but we know it's possible, and we just ask that you give us strength and endurance if something like that happens to us, and that as long as it doesn't happen to us, that we would be reaching out and um, supporting those who are in dire circumstances. Thank you for the progress Kara has made, for the progress Ellen has made, and be with Bill and Ellen as they travel. We miss having them here all the time, but we know that um, they're a part of your kingdom, and they're out doing your work. Um, be with Gary's mom as she continues to maybe round out the end of that COVID experience. Thank you for Lucy's um, um, situation not being worse and that, that she's um, okay. Um, Father um, Matt asks that we, we pray for the children and the teachers as they get ready to go back to school and all the challenges that continue to persist in operating in this kind of strange environment and um, just just give everyone um, not just safety but um, wisdom to know how to uh, really um, continue to propel to excel and, and be able to do something as complicated as education in such a a really strange circumstance. Father, um, we want to be your people, and we ask that you challenge us and push us to, to be that. We know that your son suffered in order to do your will and took on the suffering of all of humanity, and we ask that you would give us the courage to do the same thing, to take on some pain and some suffering for the good of your kingdom and for your glory and not our own. Bless us as we go out into our own worlds. Help us to be lights. Help us to be uh, a salt, a good flavor on those around us that we might uh, point them to you and draw them to your love. Thank you for Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen.